The green fuel emissions to biofuels process begins by selecting just the right strains of algae that are best suited for the specific location where the system will be deployed. Algae strains are selected based on their adaptability to local land, water, sunlight, temperature, and flue gas composition from the power plant. So what are algae? Algae are small, single-cell, microscopic plants, and they've been here a lot longer than we have. They've been here over three and a half billion years. In fact, they have fossils of uh, early microscopic plants. And the way actually the oil deposits that we, and the coal deposits that actually that we enjoy today were made was over the eons, layers of algae and other biomass getting compacted down and covered over by sediments. And as it settles in there, over time it converts into, into what we use today as fuel. Now what we're trying to do is the same kind of process, just use it much faster. We literally grow the algae using concentrated CO2 sources, and then we harvest it out, and we extract the lipids or the fats from the algae to produce oil and the starches to produce ethanol. And do you know where we get that CO2? We get it from power plants, power plants that are fun, fueled by coal. And what a great concept, the idea of taking the CO2 from coal plants and turning it back into a renewable fuel that you can use. Algae are also selected based on the type of fuel you wish to produce. Some algae have greater oil content for biodiesel production. Others have more carbohydrates for fermentation to ethanol. And still others have more protein composition for the production of animal feeds and nutraceuticals. If you have a swimming pool or an aquarium, or even look at algae as pond scum, you may have the sense that growing algae is actually very easy. And growing small amounts of algae is easy. Growing large amounts of algae or very fast is very difficult. What you're seeing here is contamination studies. As you grow algae in very large quantities, one of the things you have to contend with is how you keep contamination or pests down, just as in a garden, how you'd keep the weeds down. Because algae grow so quickly, they'll double their mass uh, within a day or within a few hours. Uh, you need to be concerned about this because not only do they grow, grow rapidly, but the things that like to eat the algae also grow rapidly. So it's important to know how to keep contaminants down uh, if you want to grow them. And it's very hard to grow them at very, very large quantities. In March 2007, Greenfuel completed construction of an engineering scale pilot system at the Red Hawk 1040 megawatt power station in Arizona. The series of greenhouse structures seen here will house the proprietary algae bioreactor systems that cover approximately one-third of an acre. If this pilot is successful, it could pave the way for a full-scale commercial deployment sometime in 2008. Unlike corn or soybeans, algae do not require potable water. In fact, algae thrive on the nutrients found in many wastewater sources. A large portion of the water used in the process is recycled.